Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and today I've got a full tank review for you on a brand new tier 8 premium German medium tank. Yeah, as if we need more of those in the game. This is the Mittlerer Kampfpanzer Project 68. And if you're wondering why this thing is just looking so darn freaky, that's because it's a crossover with Dune, which is unfortunate considering that the Screen Actors Guild strikes have delayed Dune until uh, I think next uh, spring. But Wargaming are plowing on ahead with a collaboration for a movie that's not coming out for a quarter of a year. And to be able to get your hands on this vehicle, you will have to activate a bonus battle pass grind yourself through 40 stages in 11 days starting from today and then pony up 3,500 gold on top of all the time that you've invested to be able to get the tank. So this is a huge step back over the previous mission marathon that we had for the 56 TP. Although can we even really call them mission marathons anymore? It's more of a bonus battle pass chapter. With that bonus chapter, you could get the vehicle for free and you got to be able to purchase all the improved rewards for free experience. But then again, I guess considering that Wargaming are undoubtedly going to have to be paying some kind of fee for the collaboration to whoever's organizing Dune, I guess that's why they have to have a base price for the vehicle. So before we jump into the gameplay, I'm going to compare the Mittlerer to the 122TM and also I'd say the best German premium medium tank, the Kampfpanzer 07RH. So the Mittlerer has a 120mm caliber gun, a lot like the 122TM, it hits for 400 alpha, which is I guess kind of the new standard for tier 8, right? However, the damage per minute on this vehicle, while it's not as bad as the 122TM, it's still really bad at 1,600. Considering that the Kampfpanzer is 50% better with damage per minute, you better hope that this vehicle's got some other interesting qualities later on down the line. All in all, with my gameplay with the Mittlerer, it has exceedingly similar gun performance to the 122TM, which is why I'm throwing it in here for this comparison. The penetration is 230 with standard AP. It doesn't have the APCR rounds that the 122TM has with its 1,300 meters a second shell velocity, but the gold rounds on the Mittlerer are fantastic. 300 millimeters of penetration, a lot like the Iron Arni, very similar to the 299 millimeters of pen that you'll get on the 122TM. Now, obviously, these fantastic penetration uh, values completely smash the Kampfpanzer, but also remember that the Kampfpanzer has really good HE rounds that can allow you to turn its ridiculous damage per minute up to a staggering level almost of a fully equipped tier 10 tank destroyer. That is something that the Mittlerer can only dream of. One thing you won't have to worry about with this vehicle is the amount of ammunition that you can carry because you can carry 40 120 millimeter caliber rounds. And considering that your base rate of fire is four rounds a minute, you could pretty much continuously fire for nine minutes and not run out of ammo on this vehicle. So how good is the gun handling on the Mittlerer? Two seconds aim time is nice. 0.33 accuracy, the same as the 122TM. Very nice indeed, it's a great sniper. However, it has really bad movement dispersion, 0.25, which means that unless you use vert stabs on this vehicle, then it blooms out massively with any kind of repositioning. Also, the turret traverse dispersion at 0.12 is really bad compared to the Kampfpanzer, and you could put vertical stabilizers on the Mittlerer, and it would still have worse gun handling than a Kampfpanzer without. But considering that you're hitting twice as hard, this is a penalty that some people be willing to pay. This vehicle does have really nice gun depression at nine degrees. However, this is achieved through a hydropneumatic suspension. The base gun depression without having to tilt the vehicle downwards is going to be five degrees. And it's actually only got five degrees of gun depression over the side of the vehicle because of this, which means that it's incredibly awkward if you need to shoot things that are either side hugging you or if you're tracked on a ridge line and you want to just have any kind of gun depression over the side of your vehicle the only way that you're going to get that nine degrees is directly over the front and as soon as you turn towards the side the gun depression will drop to about seven and a half degrees here which makes it feel really awkward on this vehicle it should also be mentioned this vehicle has practically no gun depression over the back of the vehicle so you're only going to have five degrees and that's if you're using the four degrees that's capable from the hydropneumatic suspension so all in all considering how clunky a hydropneumatic suspension gun depression feels to only achieve nine degrees. You'd hope that it was at least 10, if not 12 for the extra clunkiness. I'd definitely rather play the Kampfpanzer or even the 122TM within this regard, unless you're literally aiming right over the front of your vehicle and using the maximum amount of your tank depression. 
So how about the mobility on the Mittlera? So it goes at 50, very nice, not nearly as nice as the Kampfpanzer, however. 18 backwards is great, means that you can take the field mod that reduces the reverse speed without feeling like you're crippling your ability to go backwards, unlike with the 122 TM. It has a decent power to weight ratio of just under 17 with better ground resistance than the 122 TM. So it definitely feels faster than the 122 TM within that regard, but the Kampfpanzer absolutely destroys it with regards to its ground resistances and its engine power. So don't expect with this vehicle that you're going to be able to get around quickly. It is quite heavy for a medium tank at 46 tons, so don't be afraid to ram your opponents, especially if you have controlled impact. However, as you're going to see with the armor on this vehicle, maybe that's not such a good idea. This vehicle has 90 millimeters of frontal hull armor and 30 millimeters of side armor. It has 85 millimeters of frontal turret and 60 on the side of the turret. All in all, this means that your hull is absolutely trash. Even if you're using as much of your gun depression as possible, it's just completely flat. And the bulldozer blade, while it does counter some space protection, it's not going to provide you with much. Also, the whole of the side of this vehicle is 30, meaning it can be overmatched by 91mm caliber guns. And also, people can just shoot to the left and to the right of the mantlet, and unless they are tier 6 tanks that aren't firing gold, that it's just going to go right through. However, if you are using your 5 degrees of gun depression, the top of this turret does become rather good. And so, inexperienced opponents might actually struggle, and I would recommend using this as a hold down tank within that regard, which definitely gives it a tremendous advantage over the Kampfpanzer, which has one of the worst turrets, I'd say, of any of the tier 8 vehicles. Super easy to pen. It is interesting, however, that the Kampfpanzer just has so much better hull armor, which you can overangle and bait your opponents to allow you to side scrape. The upper hull is also great as well. So for players who don't shoot at the turret, the Kampfpanzer is just going to be so much better than the Mitloda. To add on to this very mediocre armor, the vehicle has a low amount of hit points at 1,300, which isn't going to keep you in the game for long. A passing mention should be made to the camera rating of this vehicle, which is near identical to the Kampfpanzer. However, one key advantage this tank has is 390 meters view range, which means that all players apart from free-to-play players without good crews are not going to need to use coated optics on this tank, unlike on the 122TM, where I feel like if I don't take coated optics, I'm not really seeing my opponents at decent distances. Crew-wise, rejoice, as it just uses the same loadout as a Leopard. So if you have the fabulous tier 10 German sniping medium tank, then they are going to work very well in this vehicle. If you're training up a new crew, I'd recommend to have a zero skill commander as they are performing the radio operator role on this vehicle. And apart from that, really none of the crew skills matter. I would recommend that you have intuition on this vehicle, however, to have access to those fantastic heat rounds without having to spam them and waste the whole reason why you're probably playing a premium tank, which is to make credits. Equipment wise, I like just a generic setup on this vehicle. Vents, vert stabs, gun rammer, the vert stabs will mean that you can actually play a bit more like a sniper because of its horrendous gun handling. And unlike the 122TM, which I wouldn't use a gun rammer because its damage permitted is so bad, this tank is fast enough to not really have to use a turbo and definitely has enough view range to not need coated optics. And so I want to try and maximize my firepower on this vehicle. My second build on this tank, I will be using a vision system and an exhaust, however, for those really bushy maps where it's super integral that you get as much camera rating as you can get, which I've got 33% with regular equipment on this vehicle, with the vision system to be able to spot through the bushes. Field mods wise, I would recommend module durability increases. This thing has a tendency to get ammo racked. I'd improve the accuracy with the second one, and I would take the camera rating for the third one, as this vehicle's reverse speed doesn't really hamper it. And for the uh, optional slot, I'd recommend the scouting so you can be able to slap your vision system in there. Anyway, let's put this beast to the test on the battlefield. So here we go. Firstly, we are rolling out on Glacier, and it looks like that Progetto likes the look of this vehicle. Okay, so firstly, I want to uh, talk about the style on this tank. Look, it does look cool, but from my perspective, I feel that it's just... It's the first of the styles where I feel that it just completely changes the tank to look stupid. Um, it looks cool, but it just really doesn't look like it fits in the game. And now, while I understand that there are options that players can go into to um, hide, uh, should we say, fictional styles, I almost feel like this one needs its own tab of kind of like futuristic styles. Interestingly enough, if you don't put the style on this vehicle, it looks okay. It just basically looks a lot like the Kampfpanzer at tier 10. However, it just looks... I feel like it looks out of place, uh, personally for me, but I understand that a lot of people won't really care, and I'll probably forget 
forget about it and just move on and realize this game it's not really about historical tanks anymore right and uh fictional or even just make-believe futuristic tanks that are meant to be from hundreds of years after we're all going to pass away uh in a science fiction universe is now part of world of tanks it just definitely looks uh out of place at least in my opinion anyway that's all i'm going to say about it let's focus on the tank so you'll notice that these hydro pneumatic tanks they just feel so darn awkward on a ridgeline it's like a, a UDES, but the thing is, is that the UDES has, I think, eight degrees of gun depression without having to use the hydropneumatic suspension, and then adds on like six on top when it is. This vehicle, because it only has five degrees of natural depression, then it has to add on four when it's using its hydropneumatic suspension, just feels really, really clunky. Now you might be questioning like, QB, I thought this had 120 millimeters with 400 alpha. Yeah, I did too, but it's not really rolling very high. Ah, well there we go, just slightly over average there. It is pretty nice to have a 400 alpha damage tank in this kind of a scenario. It's one of the reasons why the 122TM feels special. And the 122TM would be absolutely awful in World of Tanks if it wasn't for the, um, if it wasn't for that alpha damage. So you might notice, now you don't have to adjust your, your headphones or your speakers. Do you hear that very high-pitched when um, the vehicle is getting hit? That's one of the features of the tank, uh, that it actually glows different colors. It's going to glow blue, I'll show you later on. But it also has sound effects of, I guess, the, uh, the shield just holding up before the vehicle is going to be penetrated. Uh, I, one interesting thing is there's a little bit of a bug as well. And that is, if there's another Mitlera that's near you, that is also using the style, and they get hit, it makes the loud noise for you as well. That's probably a bug that Wargaming are going to have to, uh, to filter out with the way that they have uh, implemented it into the game. Alright, so I really want to go after this Tornvang, but I'm really worried about getting shot from above. But, oh well, you know, we'll still make it work. You'll notice that this vehicle, even with vert stabs, it still feels like the reticle is blooming out significantly. So, honestly, this is one of those tanks that without it, I feel as if the only special thing about this vehicle, which is its alpha damage, kind of gets taken away from it. Although, we know that we're going to get flanked from the south, so we're going to use the vehicle's pretty okay mobility to just back off there and instead try to get some kind of ridge line between me and my opponents. However, we're spotted out. This could get rather ugly right now, as there's a huge glass of tanks down towards the southeast that could be getting us from every angle. So my team is advancing in along the west. Our LT-432 is scurried back into a position where he might as well be a tank destroyer. Uh, but maybe he's still spotting people, and it looks like he still is. Looks like he spotted that bat chat. We're going to take a swing at the bat chat. Nice shot there. I have to admit, the vert stabs combo with the decent accuracy on this vehicle doesn't make it feel half bad. I would recommend that, I didn't say this in the crew recommendations, but I would recommend that you consider getting smooth ride on this vehicle as well, and maybe even definitely snapshot as the uh, gun handling is awful R and all. So you see that we bounce a shell there from the STR V S1, and we actually, if you rewind the video there, you'll see that you see the flash of the graphics, the blue flash on the hull. It's a lot like on an E100, style for the Ultramarines, if any of you got that in the Battle Pass, that whenever that tank fires, I think the, what is it, a Thunder Hammer on the vehicle flashes blue, which is exciting. All right, so unfortunately, my gun is broken, and because I'm trying to play this tank with only regular equipment and two out of three regular consumables, when my vehicle got hit there, I had to, uh, I had to, uh, not repair the gun as well. If I was using a large repair kit, I'd be okay. And again, you can see this tank taking the shots right now. You can see the blue flash of the armor uh, ricocheting. And you know what? You, you've got to try and still keep your armor towards your opponents, right? And it seems to be working out, albeit against regular rounds and poor pen on the, uh, the bat chat. The bucket might even be saving me there. We've actually managed to block 900 damage, mostly from the turret, but also you do get some funky ricochet angles on the... Uh, on the, I was going to say on the upper hull, but actually I'm not sure. Because that upper hull, as I showed you on Tanks GG, is just not really very well angled at all. And that lower plate is truly horrendous. So unfortunately, we're still waiting for our gun to come back in. But this is the Mitlera in its environment. It's hanging on the fringes 
It's hiding behind a ridge. It's trying to play a support role. And this is where you're going to have to take this tank. Uh, unfortunately, unlike something like a Leopard at Tier 10, it really doesn't feel as if uh, this the support role that this vehicle plays is truly just quite enough. It doesn't have the damage per minute. Its accuracy isn't bad, but it's not incredible. And, well, when it does hit, it, it definitely hurts. Uh, maybe I should have been spamming more gold here at the Alpine Tiger, as I seem to be hitting the only parts of his vehicle that actually provide that Chinese heavy tank with any protection. So, all in all so far for this gun performance, it's not bad. It kind of feels as if it's like a tier 9 medium tank within that regard. But it's a tier 9 medium tank that doesn't have any damage per minute. So it's all good and well when we're sitting on the fringes. But it's not very good for when you're under pressure and your opponents are catching you all in. Luckily, it's a consistent gun. We can hit the shots, even with the regular rounds this Standard 230 millimeters of pen feels pretty darn decent. But is it a gun which just makes me jump up for joy? Not really. Does the tank's mobility feel exceptional? Again, not really. Does the vehicle's armor feel incredible? Again, not really. There's too many aspects about this vehicle that just feel darn mediocre without any kind of aspects which are exceptional. I personally think that the Kampfpanzer is a much more exciting tank. And if you're a good player, you are going to do so much better with the Kampfpanzer. And you know what? Even if you're not a good player, you'll probably still do better with the Kampfpanzer because when you get to farm during those moments where you actually have opportunities to shoot your opponents, then you are going to farm so hard. Even with the regular rounds, that tank is packing 50% more damage per minute than this vehicle. And if you're penetrating the HE rounds, you know, you're doubling this tank's damage output. If not more, it's crazy from that regard. So, this tank... I guess the real question is, is... Who is it for? Is this tank for, kind of, the Dune fan? I guess, maybe. There is a good demographic of World of Tanks players, you know, the kind of like 30 to 40 year old male who is, who loves science fiction, like me. I'm pretty much bang on it. I love Dune and I can't wait for the, uh, I can't wait for the second part of the, uh, the two part film series by, is it Denis Villeneuve? Uh, coming out uh, next year. I'll definitely go and see it. Can't wait. One of the films I've been most looking forward to for years and I'm sad that it's been delayed. However, as a World of Tanks player, when I look past that, past that, all I see is a really out of place looking tank that's come out at a time when the film isn't even really generating the hype until next year. <sighs> and it's just, it's not a bad tank, but I think pretty much most players are going to do better with the 122 TM. And the exceptional players, they're going to do better with the Kampfpanzer. Although, as we can clearly see here, the Skoda T56 is definitely giving us uh, the, the side eye, or not even the side eye, just staring at us. And I have to admit, from like a visual perspective, it, it's definitely eye-catching. It's just whether it's going to be eye-catching for the right reasons or eye-catching for the wrong reasons that you're going to have to make your mind up. But can it scout? Well... Yes, here I'm going to be running vents, vision system exhaust. I've waited for all the light tanks to to get themselves all destroyed in this battle. Now we're just going to plow the, the bush line on, on Prokhorovka. Um, pretty cookie, cuss, co cookie cutter setup. And while it is a large medium tank, it's not so exceptionally large that you still can't make some bush plays as long as you know a thing or two about scouting. And uh, the damage will add up. Great. Uh, yeah, but just a cheeky old build. Not gonna do any damage here right up until the end of the battle. Still get 3,300 assistance. And then we're gonna find uh, a cheeky CC56 at the end and get ourselves a 4,700 combined game. It's not exceptional at scouting, but the camera rating doesn't hold it back 
once you have a good crew and once you have all the field mods and once you put an exhaust on it from turning itself into a pseudo light tank. So now we're going to be loading in on Mountain Pass and immediately helping out people in chat who are, even though you can't see it because I skipped the first 20 seconds of the replay, the guard was asking, how did you get the middle of Bonus pass chapter. So let me clarify, if you watch this video as it's released and you're coming home, make sure you activate the bonus chapter if you are wanting to progress towards it and not complete the main chapters. So if you have completed the main chapters, you might as well progress towards the bonus chapter. You're going to get free loot over the next 11 days. And whether you decide to buy this thing or not, just activate the bonus chapter as soon as you start playing. So this game is going to pretty much sum up the Mitlera for me in, in one round. We're going to be pretty aggressive. We're going to be cheeky. At this stage, I'd been playing the vehicle for a couple of hours, I think, and I wanted to... I wanted to try and push the tempo a little bit, put the tank through its paces. So we've got the M3Y just come out in front of us. I feel pretty safe in kind of a hold-down situation. And with vert stabs, we're able to snap our shots in. And 0.33 accuracy, you can take your chances. Now, I'm going to make a bit of a bold play here. That's driving in front of a, a T-103. Probably not the most sensible thing to do, right? But we can trade back. But of course, my damage per minute is going to stop me from getting anywhere close to a tank with 440 alpha damage, but also a much better rate of fire. So I'm turning around thinking that I should go for the T-103, but this M3 who's actually aiming at someone behind me, I know to wait, wait for them to fire, come around the side, be able to get a shot in. And it does feel nice to be trading in. Uh, and you can actually just trade shot for shot in this vehicle and you'll end up doing pretty well from your overall damage. Whereas if I'm playing in a Kampf Panzer, I'm sitting there and I'm just dumping damage in and making sure that I out raw firepower the M3Y in that scenario. So I need to get rid of this tank as quickly as possible. I'm going to try and bait him into seeing if he shoots my tracks. He does. Big misplay. We're going to come round, finish him off. One thing that's interesting I should talk about with the armor model, even though it doesn't look like it, this actually counts as space protection on the side because when you put the special style on the vehicle, it actually changes it uh, the vis visually. So without the style, the bulldozer blade looks different on this tank and does actually count as 30 millimeters of spaced armor, so take that into account. Okay, so I'm going to make a bit of a misplay here. I'm going to come around the corner. I'm going to get tracked by the TVP. I didn't realize uh, how the outlines were here. I find the shot. I put a round into the TVP, and luckily I bounce the, the T-32. And right now, I'm just thinking, oh, i got to keep farming. i got to keep farming as quickly as possible, because as soon as they realize that they're against a low damage per minute tank, they might be coming after us. And if this Emil falls, who just dumped all of his hit points there, we're going to be in trouble. And oh yeah, you can see what happens now. We don't have the damage per minute. And we we get shut down. It's as simple as that. The Lorraine, the T32, comes around the corner. And even though we were farming pretty much on reload in this game, we just couldn't manage to overpower the enemy tanks. Now, don't get me wrong, 2,800 damage in the first 3 minutes and 20 seconds of this game is really nice but considering that we were firing on reload against players who were making mistakes i just didn't really feel that i was able to punish their mistakes enough in a close quarters combat and in all of the games that i played in this tank it just seems to do reasonably well but all in all so average so mundane so mediocre i don't think it's a great tank and i don't think it's going to end up being very good for anyone if we go and take a look at the win ratios of all of the tier 8 premium medium tanks on the european server in the last 30 days it's always surprising to me that the 122 tm if we take into account the titt was not actually released in general and the obsidian is the real version of it the 122TM has the fifth best win ratio of any of the tier 8 premium medium tanks. And the Chimera, it's not even a premium tank, is it? And the Mars, that's just a fancy version of the Projetta, which has its win ratio down here, as that's only played by sweaty players who dumped 25,000 gold or whatever for the vehicle. So they must be rich. They must be very dedicated players if they have the tank. So... If we think about it, the 122TM actually has the third best win ratio of any of the tier 8 medium tanks. And if we take into account win rate difference, it's only second to the Astron Rex within that regard when we omit the Mars for reasons previously stated. And considering how close this vehicle is to the 122TM, you'd think that that would be a good thing, right? 
because it's close in statistics and the 122TM has the, the one of the top three win ratios of any of the tier eight mediums. So this must be a good sign for the Mittlerer. And I would agree with you, apart from the reason why I think the 122TM is much better than the Mittlerer is because of that tank's armor. This tank's armor is truly exceptional. As soon as you're on a ridge line, the upper hull is amazing. The side armor on the vehicle is amazing. The turret is incredible on this tank. If you're using your gun depression, the weak points on top are hard to hit. That's why this tank is doing so darn well. It doesn't matter that it has the lowest damage per minute. Pretty much the damage per minute of a tier 3 tank when the vehicle's armor is so good and it has great pen on its standard rounds and its gold rounds. Now, while the Mittlerer does have the same penetration on its on its rounds, it's just complete lack of hull armor combined with its worst camera rating and its worst health, I feel is going to put it significantly below the 122TM. And interestingly, no one really thinks about the 122TM in World of Tanks. And I think also in the not so distant future, no one will really be thinking about the Mittlerer. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was my full tank review on the brand new tier eight premium German medium tank. Really hope this video was useful for you and helped you made up your mind if you want to purchase it or grind through the battle pass to be able to get it cheaper. If it was, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments down below what you think about the Mittlerer. Do you think it looks like a fantastic tank? Do you think it looks like a mediocre vehicle? And specifically, what do you think about the Dune style that changes the vehicle from looking like it could fit into World of Tanks to looking like it really shouldn't. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.